<laughs> I know. <laughs> Do you believe this? Me, vulgar lounge entertainer, tonight on the show, Archbishop Desmond Tutu is on this show. I, I, I just I just met him backstage. Well, we call it backstage. It's, you know, the corridor. And <laughs> some people like to gather there because it doesn't leak like the studio. <laughs> anyway, I, I, never mind that. <laughs> I, mean, I, I met Archbishop Tutu uh, back there and, and I, I was just introduced to him and, and, and I started wanting to be better. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? So I'm very excited about that. It made me think of a, 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 the time, the first time I watched Oprah when she had uh, Nelson Mandela on. She told a story about meeting, uh, the first time she had Nelson Mandela on, she met uh, Nelson Mandela backstage before, uh, <laughs> before he came out. And she said hello and, and you know, and you, you know when Oprah's kind of like, oh, about meeting someone, it's someone pretty intense. And, and uh, she said that she met him and talking for a little bit and then Nelson Mandela said so uh, what's the show about today <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, and Oprah said kind of you uh, it's about you um, and that's kind of how I feel I feel like Oprah tonight I, uh, this is a show about one of the most powerful, influential, uh, awe-inspiring uh, figures of the 20th and the 21st century. A remarkable human being that, for some reason, said yes to being on this show. I know, I'm as mystified as you. <laughs> Take that, newscasters, and uh, we'll be right back. enough please please really honestly that's enough it's starting to sound a little bit fake it's starting to sound a lot fake actually but never mind because it's Hollywood and fake is what we do it's a great day for America it is it's a great day for America that there's a oh stop there's a, a fertility clinic here in Los Angeles. You can see out the window there, the great city of Los Angeles. <laughs> a fertility clinic here is offering parents the chance to select the eye and hair color of their babies. I know! <laughs> Don't you remember the good old days when people would just get pregnant, have their eight babies and go on entertainment tonight? <laughs> What's happened? And, and the Jonas Brothers, aren't they adorable? Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> the Jonas Brothers are designing their own video game. Uh, but they're very into purity, the Jonas Brothers. So the game's going to be very difficult to play. No one's allowed to grab the joystick. I don't know how it's going to work. <laughs> now, it is a great day here at this show. We have a very special guest on the show tonight. I am not kidding you. Archbishop Desmond Tutu is here tonight. <laughs> from South Africa. Now, I am going to ask the question that's on everyone's mind. I will say, Bishop, as a bishop, uh, do you always have to move diagonally? <laughs> I will. It's a chess joke. All over the country, chess players are like, finally, a joke for us! And one that doesn't involve queens. 
Although, I did tell the joke, so technically there was a queen involved. Anyway, never mind. Since we have uh, Desmond Tutu on the show, things are going to be a little bit different. There'll be no wacky comedy sketches tonight, no Desmond Tutu in a tutu or anything. <laughs> Father Tutu is a dignified world leader. And he said no. <laughs> he said he would like to escape from this program with his dignity intact. I'm like, fine, but you'll be the first, I said. <laughs> Now, uh, you might not know, or maybe you do, uh, that Father Tutu won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1984. But not a lot of people know that a few years ago, he was voted People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive. <laughs> I made that up. Uh, now, Desmond Tutu is from South Africa, which I think is a fantastic name for a country, because it tells you exactly where to find it on the map. South Africa. There you are. That's what they should do. We should do that. In with some, some of the states, the harder to find ones. You know, Oklahoma could be North Texas. There you be right there. Or North Dakota could be South Canada. Florida could be uh, shaped like a penis. Uh, where is it on the map here? Oh, I see it. Uh, anyway, South Africa, of course, used to be known for apartheid. Some of the kids uh, might not remember the apartheid, um, but it was uh, basically it was uh, apartheid was an evil uh, an evil system of state sanctioned racism. The word apartheid is actually uh, Dutch for separate hood. I know. <laughs> The Dutch, of course, have given us two very toxic things over the years. They've given us apartheid and the Dutch oven. Both very toxic. <laughs> hey, I'm just telling the news. <laughs> South Africa has a fascinating history, which I'll try and sum up for you now. Uh, but I'll do it quickly so you don't get the feeling that, you know, I'm giving you information or <laughs> all of the stuff that you don't come to the show for. <laughs> Basically, South Africa, as I understand it, is a little bit like this. Uh, things were going uh, fine for the people living there uh, until the Dutch showed up in about the 17th century. And they started colonizing. Now, by the way, colonizing is an old-fashioned word that means stealing stuff from countries that don't belong to you. <laughs> and it wasn't the cool Dutch people that we know today. It wasn't the kind of... It wasn't, you know, with the legal marijuana and their armpit hair and their relaxed attitude about boobies. These are... Uh, that, that wasn't... No, these were the old-fashioned Dutch people, the, the bastards, you know, they were angry, they were uptight, they bullied people. They could have used some of that legalised marijuana that they're so fond of. <laughs> it's funny how the minute the Dutch legalised the marijuana, they stopped, you know, colonising and just kind of chilled out and went, oh, it's okay. <laughs> I'm not endorsing it, I'm just saying, interesting, isn't it? Anyway, in the mid-19th century, the Dutch colonies of South Africa suffered a horrendous catastrophe that made a bad situation even worse. That catastrophe was known as the British arriving. <laughs> the, Bri <laughs> the British... The British... Ah, tell me. Ah, the British... <laughs> they got around. I, uh, the British, what they do is they sailed out to South Africa and they saw a land rich in diamonds and gold and they said, I say, this place is splendid. What we should, we should call it, what we should, we, I love it here. We, all we have to do is just kill the Dutch people. Uh, which basically uh, led to the first Boer War, and then that uh, led to the second Boer War. Uh, that was Boer War to the legend of Curly's Gold. Uh, that, that happened. Yickety-yack, stuff happens, Boer War, World War I, World War II, uh, you know, 1948, I think, the uh, National Party takes over in South Africa, Institute Apartheid, their great idea, and then... Uh, by the 1980s, South Africa was a racist hell zone. Uh, Nelson uh, Mandela was sentenced to life in a South African prison. So uh, Desmond Tutu travelled all over the world, making the argument that doing business with a racist South African regime was immoral. And there were a few holdouts. Most people were like, you're right, we won't do it. But there were a few holdouts, people who opposed sanctions against South Africa. They were uh, Margaret Thatcher, uh, Darth Vader, and... <laughs> I think, I think Goldfinger as well, he was like, what? No, I, I have to do, did Goldfinger talk like that? I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking of Cheney. I, I get them mixed up. Anyway. Oh, shut up. Anyway, the, uh, what happened is that uh, Bishop Tutu succeeded in getting dozens of nations to enact tough uh, sanctions that hit the apartheid regime right in the trousers. And in the end, 
uh, apartheid crumbled, Nelson Mandela was released from prison and was elected president. Mandela even, in, this is an well, amazing story, Nelson Mandela invited a man who tried to have him executed to his inauguration. That's got to be awkward. <laughs> That's like inviting your ex-wife to your wedding. <laughs> it's kind of like, so, how's things since you tried to have me killed? <laughs> eh, not bad, chicken or fish. Uh, I think it's incredible that Nelson Mandela went from, uh, you know, prison and then elected to high office. Because uh, here, recently, particularly in Illinois, people usually get elected to high office, <laughs> then they go to prison. <laughs> well, we could always hope. We'll take a black, we'll be right back. See you in a minute.